Hey guys, um, today I'm going to show you how to calculate the coefficient of drag technically without experiments. Um, all we're going to really need is simulation data, Python, and some really simple de derivations. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the drag equation, which is 1 over 2 PV squared A times the coefficient of drag. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the flight diagram where let's say the midpoint is when the motor burns out and this point is the apogee. So you really have two regions of flight, right? You have this lower region where the motor is still burning and this upper region where the motor isn't burning anymore. What we're going to do is that we're going to use this top region for a drag cal calculation because the value of A or the acceleration is not only lower than the values here, but it also decreases gradually at a slower rate so it'll lead to um, an easier drag estimation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the force diagram of a rocket in this area, which is really just um, downward force of mg, which is force of gravity, and downward force of drag. There is no um, acceleration for the motor, so we don't have to take account any upward force. So um, what we can finally do is we can write f equals ma, and then we can make we can make a force equation. So it's just m a equals one over two p v squared a coefficient of drag plus m g because we're taking gravity into account now. So we want to isolate this variable here. So we do c d equals m a minus m g over um, two times all of that over p v squared a. So what I realized once I reached this equation was that I could first simplify it to 2m times a minus g over pv squared. But then I could also account for the simulation. So in the cases of the simulations, when it gives you the values of acceleration, it already accounts for gravity. So you can basically just delete the gravity part of this since gravity is already taken account to when it comes to a. So then you can rewrite this as 2m a over PV squared, which um, then I ended up writing out as A over V squared times 2M over PA. And what you realize is that this whole entire block is constant. You know all of those values. And this block changes. So this block is going to be our block of concern. And since we have simulation data, since we're using Python here, what we're going to do is we're going to use, just use the simulation data to graph a least squares regression line and then calculate the slope, which will be a over v squared. So in the case of the least squares regression line, a equals the rise or the y values, v squared equals the run or the x values. So now I'm in my open rocket simulation data, which just tells me the time altitude, velocity, and acceleration. And by the way, this will work for Rock Sim 2 as long as you have an accurate velocity and acceleration column. So what Open Rocket does is it gives me all these data points, right? It tells me when the motor burns out, which is 85, and it tells me when we reach the apogee, which is 196. And the only data that we're concerned with is the data from the apogee to the burnout so this data right here and our what we're going to try to do is we're going to go into python and do some data cleaning which just deletes these rows so that we can make a least squares regression line so before i really get into the code part of it um, in case you're wondering the least squares regression line is just a line between say we have these data points here it's a line between these where it's trying to make the sum of the squares of the distances from the point to the line. These distances, the point of the least squares regression line is just to make the sum of these squares as small as possible. So it's basically just the line of best fit. So here comes the fun part. You're going to want to open up Google Collab if you want. It's just a really easy um, browser that lets you execute your code. And you're going to click this button here, and you're going to use this button to upload your file. 
So in this case, my file's name is openrocket.csv. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to use the imports I have here. Um, feel free to copy these into your code. You're going to use pandas to scan the data set and allow you to uh, manipulate it with the code in Python. So that's the line you use here. Um, the first thing you want to do, like I said earlier, we're doing an A over V squared calculation for the slope. So we're going to convert the velocity column that they gave you on the Excel document into velocity squared. So with this code, you're just setting a column equal to um, itself, but all the values are to the power of two now. In this second block here, we're going to drop the rows that um, are meaningless to us. So they have zero value in our calculation. Like I said, we're only calculating the motor burnout to the apogee, so we're going to want to remove the rows um, before the motor burns out, and we're going to want to remove the rows after our apogee. And in my case, since there aren't many data points in the Excel document, I can just count how many rows I have to drop from the end to reach the apogee. In my case, I just dropped the last 77 rows. And then for the beginning, I know what row that the motor burnout occurred in, which was row 85. So I can use this index to just remove all the rows from index 0 to index 84. So that removes 1 to 85. Um, and so you're kind of left with this middle portion of code like I showed before for your calculations. And then in the same block here, I have data acceleration equals data acceleration dot absolute value dot as type float. Um, I just converted the acceleration column into absolute values because it doesn't have an effect on the final calculation and it makes it a bit simpler. All right, so in this third block, the first thing you see is these data dot drop lines, which just drop the columns that are unnecessary for our calculation. So in my case, it is the columns of time and altitude, but you really should drop any columns that aren't velocity and acceleration. Um, the next thing I do is I set my X and my Y values. So my X values is a list of the data points in the velocity column, and my Y values is a list of the data points in the acceleration column. And then what I do down here is I use NumPy to just translate this into arrays. And then I use the poly function, plot function, and then I use show to show the entire graph with the black dotted line being the least squares regression line at the end. Um, just feel free to copy the code. Um, you can ignore this part. Um, yeah, so I have print m down here, which tells you the slope, and then I have it right here. So once you get once you get to this step, um, the slope is really all you need to complete the calculation. Now we're going to bring uh, ourselves to the final block of code. If you ignore this block down here, um, where you're kind of just setting your values and doing the final calculation. So the first thing is the diameter, which is in meters. You should um, calculate the diameter of your rocket. You should know it um, due to your simulation. Uh, radius, obviously, diameter divided by 2. Cross-sectional area is just um, pi times radius times radius plus this constant. Um, I will get into that right now. And if you're confused about cross-sectional area, it is just Basically, in simple terms, the largest, you just calculate the area of the largest circle present on your nose cone. So if your nose cone is built like this, the cross-sectional area is just going to be what is filled in here. In other words, it's just A equals pi r squared, which is what I have in my code. Another part of calculating the cross-sectional area is calculating the area of the fins. So if I draw a bird's eye view of our rocket here, um, let's just say we have three fins. To find the cross-sectional area, all you have to do is kind of calculate the rectangle shape of the fin, which is, you know, length, width, and then you can multiply that by however many fins you have. My team has four fins, so um, my total came out to 0 0.00128 meters squared. Make sure you're in the correct units. And all you have to do is add this to the A value in the code. So A, you know, you already have the pi r squared. Now all you have to do is add this value. So what I will do is just add 0 0.00128. So that's cross-sectional area. 
Um, just note that this number will change due, um, from rocket to rocket, so it's not necessarily, I guess, a constant, like I called it earlier. Um, I have M2 as mass because we already have an M up here. Mass is in kilograms, and since our rocket weighs 677 grams, it's going to be 0.677 kilograms, and we're going to set P to be 1.225, which is basically a standard value, and most of you guys are probably going to use this value for P. So what I do here is I do the, if you recall, the 2M over PA block, which is the constant block. Um, I have that here. So then, um, sorry. So then, uh, the last thing to do is to do the drag coefficient equation. So if you recall, the final thing was a over v squared times 2m over pa, and that's what our constant thing is. So um, all we need is m, but we already defined m up here. So all we have to do is come down here, do m times the constant, and then print the drag coefficient. And whatever number you get should be a fairly accurate drag coefficient for your robot. I mean, for your rocket. One final thing I wanted to look at was just the R squared value calculation. Um, if you don't know what R squared is really um, in our scenario, um, the closer our R squared value is to one, the more accurate will, it will be. And the closer it is to zero, the less accurate it will be. So uh, you don't really need to understand this code up here but really um, since our value is so close to one we can be pretty certain that our drag coefficient calculation is pretty good